I think we're live. Just checking. Something's loading. Hello, everybody. Hi. I think we're live. Who's here with me? Who are my sisters? I was, um, it's a few minutes late. I know you guys are good with that, but I was making myself a tea. This is a very appropriate. This is a tea that I bought at a market, a local market. We have a beautiful market here in Toronto that's closed now um, that uh, had an amazing um, indigenous woman selling teas, like wild teas. And this is a tea for women so to balance your hormones to balance your mood to give you strength to um to work with your womb and all that kind of stuff i don't know much about it but it tastes good and it's well it tastes kind of like grass but it's all right okay so it's we're about a minute in i don't want to blab too much i am waiting for um hey annabelle amazing to see you here i am just waiting for some people but let's get started hey gorgeous so today and annabelle feel free to um to pipe up with some of your wisdom because today we are talking about magnetism and what that is what is magnetism and i know you are a total expert in this uh, for those of you who don't know Thanks, Annabelle. She's saying she loves my videos. For those of you who don't remember Annabelle in the Attract Your Soulmate show, she was one of my speakers, one of my most favorite speakers. I mean, I say that about all of them, but really, truly, Annabelle, she she, she and I connected so beautifully, and she's so on the same wavelength as me. And um, yeah, and she is an expert in womb wisdom, um, all kinds of stuff. I don't remember exactly, but definitely on the topic of magnetism, femininity, um, yeah, shadow work, like if I remember correctly. There's a lot more. Uh, I just I just adore her. Anyway, um, so magnetism. What is magnetism? What is it? Why do some people have it and some don't? Well, we all have it. It's it's whether we are playing with it. It's whether we're connecting with it. It's whether we're um, letting it be ignited and allowing it to soar. Hey, Mary Carol, so great to see you. <laughs> she says she's soon to be your newest client. In fact, you are my newest client. I consider you my client already. So um, I'm so excited that you're here. Yes, feminine magnetism. And men have magnetism too. So Annabelle saying feminine magnetism. She loves talking about that. Men have magnetism too. It's their masculinity. So ma femininity, masculinity, they magnetize to each other. And this is how, um, this is what creates polarity. And polarity is what creates attraction. And I have lots of videos on that on YouTube. And I think my um, business uh, Facebook page but we're not going to go into that specifically right now as in polarity but it is part of what magnetism is about because magnetism is caused by something right and like if you list if you look at the literal meaning of magnetism it's something that's magnetic you're drawn to it or it you draw something to your magnetism or right like the word magnetism or magnet is a literal word for what it is now how can a woman oh my gosh okay i'll go don't worry i won't forget my train of thought allison's here um oops i almost closed stay on this page um allison is here and annabelle and uh alchemy i always stumble on your name i'm so sorry um welcome guys welcome welcome so what is magnetism in a woman and annabelle already said it because she's the pro we know that already um it's feminine magnetism how, how what is feminine magnetism right we all know that woman that woman who is maybe older um 
you know, who has gray hair, maybe she doesn't have a perfect body, but she is so magnetic. Men just stumble all over themselves to talk to her. To, she's, you know, radiant and walks down the street with this beautiful flow. And people are like, I want, women are saying, I want to be like her. And men are saying, I want to be with her. And that's true feminine magnetism. I'll go a little bit deeper into what, what that entails. But the opposite is, not the opposite, another part of feminine magnetism is young women. So I have two daughters, they're 20 and 23, actually 21. Oh my God, my youngest just turned 21 uh, this month during uh, lockdown. Eek! Regardless, they're beautiful, beautiful, radiant young women. And these girls, I call them girls because they're my girls, but they're women. These, these women, among all the other women, they have natural magnetism because they're still young. Their youngness, their youth creates magnetism. And this is why so often we mistake the fact that men want to be with younger women for their physical body. It's actually not that. It's what, what attracts older men to younger women is their magnetism. And guess what? We can create, we, you know, older women, I'm in my mid forties, exactly. I'm 45. I just turned 45. We women in our forties, fifties, and yes, even in your sixties, you can connect to your magnetism and create the same kind of attraction that, that you would have younger. In fact, much more evolved. Um, much more, you know, you're, you're much more evolved, um, but you can attract a man to you in that way as well and feel that passion and feel that polarity. Y you know, I get woman after woman telling me, well, you know, men my age want to date younger women. Maybe. And I think that is partially true, but it's not the whole story. Men your age are generally, they come into their king kinghood. Um, I talk about queenhood and kinghood. And men in their 40s and 50s, more in their 50s, they turn into kings if they are really going to evolve into a king. Alison A. Armstrong talks about this in um, Keys to the Kingdom, uh, one of the books she read, she wrote. And um, she talks about the stages of what men go through and some stay stuck in their stages. Those are, you know, immature masculine. And a lot of men end up becoming kings. And these kings are um, in the age group that these women are, are complaining about not being attracted to them. Well, they're not, they're not not attracted to you because of your age. They're not attracted to you because you're hardened you are bitter. You stopped taking care of yourself in a deep sense. I'm not taking talking physically, you know, you might have gained a bit of weight or whatever. That doesn't matter. You in in your essence, in your being, you you've given up in a way. And or it could be that your light has been dimmed by a lot of pain by a lot of perceived, um, you know, pain that men caused you. And, and by perceived, I mean, yes, it's, it's definitely been done to you by, by men, but it's also uh, what you have attracted into your life to this point. And, and that's a very bold statement to say. And I, I know, you know, no one consciously attracts abuse and pain of la that level. Um, so I'm not blaming you, but what I am saying is that is where your vibration was at to, to bring that into your sphere. But now is the time to stop that. Now is the time to take care of yourself to a point where you're so radiant and beautiful and you have your boundaries intact, which is part of being feminine, um, that you feel free again to express this. And, and let me just go back to feeling free and beautiful because Part of what hardens women over time is when they get, um, they were being radiant and innocent and open and they get stabbed. They get hurt 
by a man during that time. But her radiance and openness during that time wasn't complete. It wasn't whole. It wasn't with those healthy boundaries. It wasn't um, fully connected to herself. It might have been a little bit of immature femininity where you're using your youth, like using it in, in a manipulative way, in a bit, in a way, right? And, and when I say these things, I'm not accusing women of doing this. I'm just saying we've all done this. I certainly have. I mean, I've always had physical beauty. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, from, oops, I'm just getting a pop up. Sorry. I'm from European descent. I have, you know, my parents were good looking. Like I have physical attributes that people would say I'm good looking. Right. But and so when I was younger, when that, you know, when there weren't wrinkles, when there weren't wrinkles in my heart, when, um, you know, when I had a perfect body, you know, all that kind of stuff, I was like, oh, this is easy. I can attract men easily. I'll just, you know, throw on some makeup, do a little flirting, and the men were flocking. But that was me using and manipulating my feminine energy, my natural feminine energy, which I I feel is an immature way of, of presenting yourself. Now, over the years, you know, over, you know, years of painful relationships and hardening from, you know, following a career path and being really stressed out and, and being with a man who was more in his feminine, which hardened me even more, um, in brackets, by the way, the reason I attracted him was because I was in my in my masculine too much, right? Which many of us have a, the disease of, and it's the disease of imbalance. It's not that masculine energy is bad. I have still masculine energy. I just balance it with feminine energy. So why am I talking about all of this? Um, that we've all been there using our feminine energy and um you know these older men that go for these you know hotties that are younger yeah maybe these women are using their feminine energy in an in an immature way and they have daddy issues and all of that but who cares okay you know we've all done it maybe we haven't all done it but this is this is kind of the progression of uh, to maturity and my question to you is are you ready and are you willing to um, to, to mature your own magnetism and femininity. Are you ready? Are you ready to step out of, oh, I thought I fixed these dumb pop-ups of Facebook Messenger. Sorry, guys. Are you ready to step out of the woe is me and learn the ways that you can, um, Mary Carol, I see that you made a comment. I'm just going to finish my sentence. Find the ways that you can connect to your femininity again in a safe way. Because what I'll teach you is the, and I'm going to teach you this now. I can't go too deep on a Facebook Live, of course. It's a, it's a whole process. It has taken me 15 years to learn all this, right? So, um, but, but, to connect back, I forgot my train of thought exactly, sorry guys, um, to connect back to that radiance in such a mature way that not only do you have this amazing radiance, and you probably see it in me, right? You see that I have this radiance, and I do, and I know it, and I own it. I'm not ashamed of it, but you know what I also have? I have healthy boundaries, and I sometimes am a bitch, and I'm okay with it, right? All of my parts are integrated. And I know how to access that radiance and that magnetism when I need it. And to be honest with you guys, my partner's been home for a month now. And what I've realized is slowly I've been slipping back into the hardening place that I was in, uh, in other relationships. Because A, he's home all the time, so I don't have a chance to miss him. B, 
I am working my buns off on my business. I am working at least eight to 10 hours a day on my business. I'm loving it. I love serving you guys. That's not the point. This is not a, a sob story. My point is I'm in work mode. I'm in business mode. That's my masculine energy. So I'm making decisions. I'm making calls. I'm, you know, scheduling and I'm making content and all of that. And there's femininity in there, but it's making me um, be in a very masculine place. And the third thing that I have been forgetting is self-care because there is my work and there is my relationship. And as soon as I'm in my bedroom right now, working from my bedroom because my office space um, doesn't work while well, we have one of his daughters home and he's home all, all day, it just doesn't work, it's on a landing. So um, it doesn't have a proper door. So what I have, when I, so I'm in my bedroom right now, uh, working at a desk at the, at the, um, at the window, I'm digressing again and losing my train of thought. So I have my work and I have my relationship. And as soon, oh, this is where my point was going. As soon as I come downstairs to do anything, like grab a tea, actually, I'm gonna just take a sip of tea. Oh, that helps my throat a little. Um, I'm in my relationship, if you know what I mean. So I worked from home before COVID, but when I would go downstairs, I would have my own headspace. I would be able to rejuvenate. I would watch a video or go on Facebook or something or read my book or go for a quick walk or pet my dog. I would have my own space and rejuvenate in my feminine way. And I haven't been able to do that. I'm literally coming from here, work into my relationship and then sleep and repeat. And it's been uh, chipping away at me a little bit, which without realizing. And wow, the last couple of days, my man has been very tolerant because I've been a little bit, you know, sharp with him or blamey or um, irritated. And I realized, oh my gosh, finally I realized today, I woke up today just feeling so amazing and so grateful for him because I realized that, oh, my nose is running, guys. <sighs> Um, I realized that my self-care has not really even been dwindling. It's like literally non-existent. I'm in my business or in my relationship and that's it. And I used to be the queen of self-care. I teach this stuff to my clients. Mary Carol, get ready. So I am going to create my self-care practice again. And I'm so excited that I realized this because that is what helps me tap back into my radiance. And even just thinking about it makes me feel more radiant again. So I'm just gonna look, you guys have been commenting a little. Oh, so Mary Carol said that her radiance came to life after her divorce. Yeah, that happens a lot. That happens a lot because you're you're stuck in that dynamic of the being crushed, your soul crushing, you know, in the relationship and um and being free of that pain can really connect you back to your radiance for sure, for sure. I love that. Um and that's not to blame him, right? And we know that, but she's really taking responsibility by saying it that way, by saying, you know, my radiance returned to me when I got myself out of this toxic relationship. I love that. So please, guys, I've been talking for 18 minutes. Um, share with me what, what kinds of things would help you feel radiant again now that, you know, this maybe this is landing for you. What is... What are some things that you can do today, even during COVID, that will um, make you feel more radiant? But also, which by the way, when I say radiant, it creates magnetism. When you feel radiant, you're automatically mag magnet. You, you have magnetism, I should say. Because, so you can't just do magnetism. That's when you're trying too hard. That's when you're, um, 
you know, manipulating and doing something. Magnetism is something that you have naturally from connecting to your femininity. So I will share with you because no one's sharing. Can you please, please interact with me? I feel so lonely here just talking to my own face. Um, so some of the things that help me feel radiant is simple things, you guys. I don't know if you can see, but and they're not that great anymore, but my nails, of course, I don't have nail polish on because there's no nail salons open, but um, I I just did my cuticles and and really, you know, everything that I do that that makes me feel more feminine and more radiant is slow and deliberate and for me. So filing my nails, you know, very, very meticulously. Honestly, that filled me up so much the other day when I did it. Pardon me. Um, I also love lathering my body up with delicious moisturizer. You know, I'm really just like caring for my body. It takes it takes the rushing out of life and rushing and rushing and and pressure and going and doing and doing and doing is very masculine. That's why we feel so out of sorts when we're overworked and when we're overcommitted, we don't feel good. Slow it down, right? Even just a tiny moment of slowing it down will instantly increase your, your connection to your feminine. Mary Carol uh, is saying, oh, thank you guys for sending some messages. Her, uh, that her, that, oh, okay, we already talked about that. Um, Karen, hi, Karen, by the way. Uh, you're saying that doing your skincare routine, yeah, me too. I just bought some beautiful, not just, but like a few months ago, I switched to Beauty Counter. It's actually a very amazing non-toxic line. And I love my skincare routine. I love it. Um, because I also know that it's good. It's nourishing for my skin, but it's also not toxic. It's not put, you know, our skin is our biggest organ. So I've, you know, I switched out my deodorant already. And then I was ready to switch out my skincare, which by the way, doing stuff like that, really investing in things that are healthy for you, even if it costs more money. Um, investing in makeup that is more expensive, maybe usually actually it's the same price as, you know, uh, Sephora brand or, or Mac, but using stuff on your skin that nourishes your skin and that's healthy because when you're put, literally when you're putting chemicals on your skin, and toxins and toxins that screw up your hormones you are not connected to your femininity this is not the core of who you are the core of who you are takes deep true care of yourself right even the mascara i'm wearing is from beauty counter no more toxic mascara for me no more toxic hair care products although my hair hasn't looked as good as with the toxic stuff but I still look good, you know, it's still way better than the toxic stuff that we are putting on our skin and on our hair and in our bodies, through our mouths and um, under our armpits. Okay, I digressed just there. Uh, oh, Mary Carrie, you might give yourself a manicure today after I dig in the dirt. Yeah, dig in the dirt first, connect with the earth get really grounded and then a lovely manicure to top it off. I love that. And Karen is saying cooking calms me down. Also organizing my space helps. Yeah. Yeah. Like being in a space that is conducive to the energy that you're trying to create. So a mess all around you creates this like frantic, you know, never finished kind of feeling. Whereas a calm and simplified space, really also calms the nerves and puts you in that in that really slowed down kind of uh, mood, which is so good to connect to your femininity as well. 
So Mary Carol is saying she discovered Zen Tangle last night and ordered supplies to do it on my own. I have no idea what that is. I'm so sorry, but it sounds cool. I don't know. I don't know. If you have a chance, Mary Carol, uh, I'll put it in the comment what it is. And also for others to know when they're watching the replay, because I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe I should. So let's go back to the original topic, which is how to increase your magnetism. This, these are some of the key points that will increase your magnetism. And guess what, guys? There is no quick pill or quick fix, and there's no technique to do it. You can't do magnetism. You have it. And the way you have it is by connecting back to who you are, your intuition, slowing down, listening to what you need, giving it to yourself. And there are many other practices. I love that Mary Carol is going to dig in the garden. Um, actually, I recommend people really being on the earth. Uh, you know, it's great for with your hands. Um, I think you are a little bit more south. So I'm in Toronto, Canada, which is New York type of weather. And um, it's still a bit cold. It actually snowed today, which is weird for April, even for our region, by the way. Um, but what I recommend once the weather gets warmer is bare feet on the earth. Whether it's on your little patch of grass in the front or backyard, or at the bottom of your apartment building, or in a park, which we're not allowed to enter right now, but hopefully soon we'll be allowed in parks again. You know, bare feet on the ground. That helps you connect to Mother Earth and it helps you connect to yourself. And it really actually energetically, it really grounds you. And Annabelle, I'm sure, can speak more to that as well. So those are some of the things that will help you connect back to magnetism and um, really create that natural radiance that feels so good to you see the thing the ultimate thing that magnetism does is it helps you feel good and when you feel good you're automatically magnetis magnetism you know what i'm trying to say when you feel good you automatically feel magnetism you have automatic magnetism when you feel good you know when you're a Debbie Downer, and I don't like saying that because there's people in this group named Debbie. So uh, when you're, you know, a downer and you're um, always negative and you're in a bad mood and, you know, of course, from time to time, it's fine. But when you, you know, when you're with someone who's like that, you, that's repelling. That's not magnetizing. Now, if you're magnetized to that, um, if you're drawn to that because you want to help, and because um, you want to, you know, you want to fix them, that's actually part of this sort of disease, right? It's the overgiving. It's not trusting that they can handle it. It's not taking care of yourself because you're you're giving away to someone who's never going to receive it. So, um, so my point originally was, you know, when you're in a room with someone who is just sucking the energy out of the room with with their negative talk their negative energy that is um the point when you're in it when someone is in a good state let's say the opposite when someone is in a good state and they walk into the room everyone can be drawn to them be that person be that person now. And when it comes to dating online, I know you guys are dying to know about more about dating online. This magnetism piece is crucial in dating online now and dating in real life once the lockdown is over. This piece, if you if there's nothing else you do right now while you're in lockdown, then connecting to your radiance and building your ability to to uh, connect to your radiance and to be be a radiant light during this time, you are going to be set for the time when you're out there again dating um, after COVID. Now, if you are on my email list, you got an email yesterday talking about now is the time to date. And I highly recommend that you start dating online. It's free. 
you have extra time unless you're still, you know, some of you are still working, I get that. But most of us have extra time. And guess what? The people that want to meet you are also online because they're also home, working from home or, or not working at all. So this is the exact time because why not now? If you don't do it now, when will you do it? Oh, I'll do it later, right? This is a disease we have is putting stuff off. And there's no better time than the present because if you don't start dating now during COVID, you're very likely the kind of person that puts things off even when there isn't a pandemic, right? The pandemic is just another excuse to put it off. Adapt, you guys. Adapt to the situation. We don't know. Maybe every three months we're going to be in lockdown because this virus is going to keep rearing its head. We don't know. We don't know anything that's coming. So start your life now. Start your dreams now. This is a wake-up call, you guys. The reason I have my incredible man with me during this lockdown is because I'm a go-getter. I'm an action taker. And during the time that I was single several years ago, I took the leap to start dating again and to just do it. No excuses, no whatever, I'm too broken, I've had too many, none of that. I just went for it and, and I wanted to see what would happen. Now, of course, I was a relationship coach at the time and I had some techniques that I wanted to try out and I wanted to get out there and try them, but it was also scary. And I know it's scary for you guys to get out there. And it's especially a great excuse that COVID is happening right now because you can't meet anyone. It's not really dating. If you're dating online, that's all excuses and it's all resistance. So whenever you want to do something, but you're putting it off, it's resistance 100% of the time. In a great book called um, The War of Art, um, talks about how resistance is everywhere. Resistance is in every moment of procrastination. Resistance is in every mo moment that you have an excuse for something that you want. Resistance is in every negative thought. Resistance lives everywhere. It lurks in family members. It lurks inside you. It lurks in COVID, right? So don't let resistance run your life any longer. Take action today to start not only building your radiance and naturally building your magnetism, but start dating, start getting out there. And by out there, I mean on video, you know, that's what I mean. I don't want to get negative comments saying, but Barbara, we're all in lockdown. How can I date? I mean, video, I call it COVID style video dating. All right. I am going oh carol is saying zen tangle is a method of meditative drawing that has patterns or t tangles triangles i i'm feeling like you're meaning that sounds exciting is that an uh a, on your ipad or something though because i really don't like doing art on a computer or an ipad but oh my god that sounds incredible sounds incredible i'm gonna try that i love 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 the meditative drawing i used to do mandalas and uh, coloring books I should find my coloring book, shouldn't I? Okay, I'm digressing. My point is complete. I would love to hear from you in the comments, even after, you know, after I stop being live. If you're watching the replay, give me some comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you have any questions. I will certainly answer them all. And have an amazing day, you guys. And thank you for being on this amazing Facebook Live. I love you sending you so much magnetism and self radiance and um i will see you on tuesday for relationship facebook live right here in this group love you all bye for now